Hi babes, I wanna teach you all about feeding your baby. Okay, I get asked questions all the time about feeding your baby and your baby's sleep, starting from like birth, right? People are always wanting to know, how much do I feed my baby? How often do I feed my baby? How often should my baby sleep? How much should my baby sleep? When is my baby gonna sleep through the night? It's all kind of connected. So your baby's feeding and your baby's sleeping are pretty like locked like this, right? They depend heavily on one another. So I want to talk you through this and give you the highlights. If you have specific questions, you should drop them in the Facebook group. I can give you very um, narrow answers, right? Like especially for you, but here's your general idea of eating and sleeping as a newborn slash through the fourth trimester ish. Okay. All right. The first two weeks of your baby's life, it's going to be very on demand. So that means whenever your baby demands to eat, you're going to feed them. It's very baby led. You're letting your baby lead how often they eat, how much they eat, when they eat, when they sleep. Um, you're going to notice that they seem like they literally just sleep and then wake up to eat and then sleep some more. And that is what your baby's doing. It's actually what we want. Your baby is, um, transitioning. Your baby is transitioning and kind of accommodating their new life on the outside of you and that's what we expect them to do. Sleep, 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 wake, eat, 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 and go right back to sleep. Um, you know, change their diaper every two hours. They're going to hate it and then they can go right back to sleep or go right back to eating. On demand, first two weeks. So, up to a month, we think your baby's going to eat every two hours or so. Again, that's what we kind of expect. If you can make it through that first month, it is the hardest. But if you can make it to that four week mark, you are golden. Things will start to get better because your baby's gonna span out and start to go three hour stretches. And that means at night too, which is gonna decrease on the number of wake ups that you have to do overnight, right? The more that we can feed your baby during the day, the less they're gonna eat during the nighttime, starting at about a month. It's not too early to be mindful of it at the second and third week of life, but really at a month, we can start to kind of look at how much they're eating, when they're eating, and what can we do to hopefully increase the overnight sleep. By six weeks, and we really think that is kind of possible, and then by eight weeks, we definitely know that we can really, I don't want to say manipulate, but we can be intentional in the things that we do with your baby during the day when we allow them to sleep, when we have them be awake, and when we feed them. Um, that is going to be killer for your overnight sleep. Killer in a good way. Like, it's really going to give you a lot of overnight sleep. Okay, so the way that you calculate how much your baby needs to eat during the day is you take your baby's body weight, so how much your baby weighs, divide, um, multiply it, sorry, take your baby's body weight, multiply it, so times 2.5, that is the number of ounces that they need to eat in a day. That's how much they need to eat, okay? Now, you're going to take that and divide it by the number of times you feed your baby in a 24-hour period. So, every two hours round the clock, first two to four weeks, divided by 12. 12 feedings in a 24-hour period. For a baby older than a month, you, or if your baby has gotten here, there are babies that are eight weeks old and they're still eating every two hours and that's totally fine. Let me put that out there. Like that is 1000% fine. We don't want to force your baby to go three. I mean, you never want to force your baby to go three hours, but you don't want to force your baby to go three hours before the month mark because it's quite realistic. That they're going to need to eat every two hours, right? I also think that it's totally fine and realistic and expected for an eight week old to need to eat every two hours. I'm saying some six week olds, some four week olds, some eight week olds will be able to go three hours. It's nothing to be concerned about as long as your baby is gaining weight. Um, so if you're feeding every three hours divided by eight, that's eight feedings every um, 24 hours, right? And I've done some calculations for you. I'll give you how much we kind of think your baby should be eating at every feeding plus how many times you should be feeding your baby according to the most like common weights, okay? Or it will at least give you an idea. You can do your math, the math part on your own. Okay, so at around eight weeks, could be as late as four weeks, 
um, sorry, could be as late as four months. So eight weeks to, what is that, 16 weeks? Your baby's going to somewhere in there stretch out to a three hour mark. That means they're not gonna need to eat for three hours, but their consumption at each feeding is going to be obviously increased a little bit, okay? And I think I already talked about this, but the more that we feed your baby in the daytime, the less likely it is that they are going to need to wake up at night. So let's look at your baby's weight. If your baby weighs seven pounds, which is kind of your average, uh, your average baby at birth is seven to eight pounds. So if it's seven pounds, your baby's going to need 17.5 ounces. If you're feeding around the clock every two hours, that's 12 feeding. So divided by 12, that gives you 1.5 ounces, right? Remember, we think your baby's going to eat every two hours and eat an ounce and a half to two ounces. It's not very much, but they're eating regularly. They're eating often, often, and also in between those two hours of eating, they're gonna be sleeping and getting their diaper change, and that's really it. That's all they're really gonna want. It's kind of around the clock like that, okay? Now, eight pounds, you're looking at 20 ounces, divided by 12, because every two hours, still 1.6, so you're right there at an ounce and a half. So if your newborn is not, um, if they weigh seven or eight pounds and they're not taking two ounces, it's not anything to freak out about. A lot of people will be like, oh my God, my baby's not taking two ounces. It's okay. It's all dependent on their weight and what they need. So let's look at a little bit of a larger baby when they're born. 10 pound baby, you're looking at 25 ounces divided by two hours because they're gonna be eating two hours um, increments, even though they're a 10 pound baby. You still think for the first two weeks to four weeks, it's two hours on the dot. You could have a 13 pound baby and we still think that. You want your baby to be having meals every two hours for that first month so that A, they go back to birth weight and B, they we set the foundation of them having a nice incline in their weight. That's what we want in babies for them to grow. Um, 25 ounces a day every 24 hours you're going to divide that by 12 that's two ounces so even a 10 pound baby is only supposed to have two ounces don't feel like you need to force your baby to eat two ounces every single time if your baby i mean i guess even a 10 pound baby don't force your baby to eat which leads me to overeating how do you know if you're overfeeding your baby how do you know when to stop how do you know when your baby is done well first of all look at the signs of your baby your baby will close their lips they'll lock them and you'll be like trying to get the bottle in there. They will not open their mouth. They will use their tongue to push the bottle out. They will like make a bad face. They'll turn their face away. They might swap the bottle. Your baby will tell you when they're done. I promise. If you're curious, take the bottle and touch the roof of their mouth. The trigger to sucking is actually on the roof of their mouth. And so if they are still hungry and they like fell asleep or they got distracted, they will clamp down and they will do a real nutritive suck. Something that is obviously providing them with nutrients. If they just do a um, comfort type suck, it's probably a sign that they are all done. Now, what happens if you do overfeed your baby. Well, they'll spit it up. Their bodies are not actually made yet. They're not developed enough to have the same stomach that we have. And they're missing a few things in this vicinity that helps keep food down. And that's why babies are able to spit up. But if you overfeed your baby, no worries. They'll just spit it up. I also think that it's important to recognize that just because your baby spits up does not mean that you're overfeeding them. You should be mindful of how much spit up they're doing. Is it after every single feed? Is it about the same amount? Are they also looking like they're in discomfort? Overfeeding your baby is probably not going to result in too much discomfort. Again, they're just going to spit it up. Their bodies don't have the mechanisms and are not designed anatomically to keep food down like an adult's body would. You're not going to see a super distended belly like stay there. They're just going to spit it up. Um, you know, I, I think that it's important to think, too, that there are lots of other reasons that your baby might be spitting up. One of them being that is what babies do. So it is very, very common and normal. So not just common. It's also normal for babies to spit up. That is fine. Realize that's totally fine. So those are your weights at birth. Let's talk about a little bit down the road. So what about like a four or five month old baby? We're thinking, or even a three month old baby, let's go to 13 pounds. That baby's going to need 32.5 ounces. That seems like a lot of ounces, but you're feeding them eight times a day and those bottles are four ounces. 
right? You're feeding them every three hours or so, and that's eight times in a 24 hour period. Four ounces, that's a hefty size bottle. When you jump up to 15 pounds, your baby's gonna be getting five more ounces, 37.5. Again, eight hours, because you're feeding them every three hours based on their age. So remember, these babies are still less than six months. We don't really want them going more than three or four hours without feeding. You jump up to 4.6, so a little bit more than four and a half ounces. And an 18 pound baby, 45 ounces. That sounds like so much, but it's because you're feeding them eight times a day and they're probably sleeping through the night, which means that every feeding, they need 5.6 ounces. They need five and a half plus a little bit more. That seems like so much when you see it in a bottle, but again, these babies are heavy enough. We think that happens around 10 pounds that your baby can sleep through the night realistically as long as it doesn't impact your milk supply, as long as they're not waking up hungry, um, and as long as they're getting their caloric intake during the day. I hope this was helpful. We talked about feeding your baby and what to expect in the first two weeks and how to calculate how much exactly your baby should be eating plus overfeeding, how to know if you're overfeeding, and what to expect from spit up. So, any of your other questions, please put them in the Facebook group. I love talking about feeding your baby. Sit up is one of my favorite topics. Ironically, I know it's so gross. Um, if you have questions about how much your baby should be eating or how often they should be sleeping or even a sample routine of what you should be expecting from your baby at their weight and their age, drop it in our Facebook group. I'd love to help you do that. Bye, guys.